Okay, how's everybody doing this evening? I appreciate you watching this video and uh, hopefully you'll, I'll be able to add something to your knowledge about cryptocurrencies or maybe add to the discussion of cryptocurrencies. But uh, of course, my name is Kent and the channel is Zia San Diego. We are developers of the challenge application, which is a geolocation app that currently runs on the Google Play and the Android app store. So we are developers, we're into cryptocurrencies. That's my, that's where I'm at. I'm not a gold and silver person. I see there's like two camps forming right now. Uh, mostly people that are saying that because of all the stimulus taking place, that we, uh, they need to buy gold and silver hard assets. A few are talking cryptocurrencies, um, but most people are pretty much still stuck on gold and silver because gold and silver, um, is an easy way to go. I mean, you just buy your gold, you buy your silver or whatever, and that's an easy way to go. But I don't think that's going to be the future. And I think Bitcoin crypt cryptocurrencies are going to be the future. And what I'd like to do in this video is I'd like to give my, um, basically give my opinion of who Satoshi Nakamoto is. Uh, Satoshi Nakamoto, let's first of all, let's talk about Satoshi Nakamoto. This is probably, um, actually would be one of the wealthiest people in the world if we knew who he was, or she was. We don't even know if it, who it is. We just know the name. Um, because literally there's a hundred, um, a million, I think there's a hundred million Bitcoin in the Satoshi account, which would be like, or a hundred million, I think there's a million Bitcoin in the Satoshi account, which, which means that it would be about $7 billion. So the creator of Bitcoin uh, is, is, is worth $7 billion, which is quite a sum of money. So I don't know that anybody uh, would, would not be um, taking credit for Bitcoin uh, simply for the fact that there's, there's a lot of money on the table. Uh, secondly, I just looked at the market cap on uh, Bitcoin. It's about $135 million, $135 billion, I'm sorry, I got to get my numbers straight tonight. So not only is the creator of Bitcoin worth about seven billion, they've created um, a system of, uh, of, of, of being able to exchange worth with a market cap of about 135 billion. So this person would be very extremely worldwide known and would pr probably get a, n a number of prizes, including the prize of Nobel Prize of Economics and whatever else there is out there to win, would be that person. So that person would be extremely, extremely wealthy. So if that person is alive, they're not too concerned about money. Money's not their, uh, their, their thing, it must not be their thing. Or they'd be collecting on their seven billion. And the other thing that's kind of interesting about the seven billion, isn't that a great way of making it ha hack proof, knowing that it's secure? I mean, if you're a good hacker, you got a seven billion dollar prize out there, the Satoshi account. So uh, it's a good way of, of testing Bitcoin security. If Bitcoin was a was a really bad written, easy to hack, your accounts are easy to hack. Your private coin is, or your private uh, key is easy to easy to um, uh, a guess or figure out or whatever. You got a seven billion dollar prize at the end or in, other end of that. So that's kind of a, a, a really good uh, way of testing the security of Bitcoin, knowing that there's an account out there worth seven billion that nobody has been able to figure out or hack into. So. But the next thing about this person is this person would have to be, in my, my opinion, a genius, probably one of the, you know, a, a, a tremendously creative, understanding person of the system because th what they basically did is they, uh, they solved the double spending problem, the problem of the third party, the problem that we all, the, you know, plagues the system right now is we all go through banks, we go through the insurance companies, we go through whatever else we do. They were able to solve that at that well actually this the other things are smart contracts which isn't bitcoin but bitcoin is is technically a way to solve the banking issue the, the banking problem or the transfer of money problem and that is a, a very ingenious idea much more difficult to solve than people would think so they were able to solve the double spending problem they were able to white write a white paper come up with an algorithm open source and and be able to put this out for 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 people to start mining bitcoin this was i believe something that took more than one person to do this was not a single person that was able to do this 
And not only was it a single person that was able to do this, a single person never told anybody else. So it's not like, hey, I wrote a white paper, it's a Bitcoin thing, it solves the spending problem, double spending issue. Oh, why don't you give me a proofread? You know, I got a white paper here, I want to give it a proofread. And by the way, the white paper is very intelligently written. Uh, if you've ever want to re read a very well-written white paper, read the Bitcoin white paper. In fact, my son, I think, has practically memorized it. It's, it's, it's pretty impressive. And it's hard to fathom that any one person would write this and not have anybody maybe proofread it or anybody else look at it or see it like a friend, which should have it or, you know, someplace uh, if, 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 if he or she, she sent this out. And for the purpose of this, I'll just say he, because I don't know if it's a man or woman, but it's just much easier to say he, he and she than, or just more easy to say he than he and she. But whoever did it, whatever person did it, I guess that's the best way to do it, person. Whatever person did it would have probably at least interacted with somebody else about some of these things they were thinking. So we have no record of that. We have nothing and nobody's come forward. And you would think with the $135 billion market cap and a billion dollar account, private key, someplace out there, somebody would have mentioned it, somebody would have said it, somebody would have some other information besides what we have, which is almost nothing. A few chats basically is all we have. And this is, is absolutely one of the most intelligent ideas in the history of the world and we don't know who it is. Absolutely incredible. So let's let's think about this and think that if if it's if it's no one single person, what entity would want to create Bitcoin? Um, it's either one of two groups of people, either a group of people that are anti-government, that maybe are are trying to establish a libertarian point of view, and they realize the government uh, is creating money out of nothing, which is uh, a Keynesian versus um, Austrian, Austrian economics thing, uh, Keynesian believing elastic, elastic money, create as much as you need. Uh, whenever you need money, you just, you basically have the printing presses, you can do it. So either the, either the group, the people that, that did this were either the, the group that were anti money creation or the people that were money creators that wanted the money creation system because they knew eventually the gig would be up and you wouldn't be able to continue to print money, print money, print money, print money and um, not have the people finally realize what was going on and, and, and start to rebel against it. So it has to be a, one of these groups, either anti-government people trying to escape the system or government people realizing eventually that the gig was up. I tend to believe that it was the government people thinking that the gig was up. And I believe the person, the inventor, the idea of Bitcoin, this real Satoshi Nakamoto is actually Ben Bernanke. That is my opinion, that he is Ben Bernanke. Ben Bernanke is an interesting individual. First of all, very intelligent. Secondly, he is a cryptographer. Uh, ben Bernanke is a cryptographer. I'm gonna put a link below to a video of a person that did a, a talk about gold and silver, and he was talking about Ben Bernanke and him being a cryptographer. And if you understand Bitcoin, you understand that the way that they're able to solve the double spending problem is through cryptography, which is uh, being able to um, having things be be be, be private and, and secret, and having it being have it, having it in such a way that there's an algorithm for for keeping things private. And of course, that's Ben Bernanke's background as a as a cryptographer, which is exactly what needed to be for the creator of Bitcoin. Also, Ben Bernanke doesn't seem or would not be the kind of person that would care about $7 billion. Now, I don't know Ben Bernanke's lifestyle. I don't know where he lives or what he does, but you know what? He's part of the, he was ahead of the Federal Reserve, which was printing money out of thin air. I don't believe a person like that in that position with that knowledge base and has that kind of power would be so interested in the money. So that's another reason why I think possibly could be our good friend, Helicopter Ben Bernanke. The other reason is I believe it took a group of people and I think Bernanke would have those resources and that group of people to help him create something like Bitcoin, an open source digital currency that was able to, uh, to, oh, to be used around the world and take away a lot of the, uh, the barriers of, 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 a, of a, uh, a governmental currency. And I'm, I'm gonna read some quotes here of Ben Bernanke because uh, Ben Bernanke has spoken both against and for Bitcoin. 
but he tends to be very, very favorable in Bitcoin. And I have to get my glasses out and read some of these quotes. I was going to make a, a video on this where I was going to do it from the computer and actually uh, sh take you to the pages. It's actually a, a Reuters um, report done in 2013. I have to get my glasses on to read about this. But um, this is what Ben Bernanke said in 2013 about Bitcoin. Um, and this was a letter that he uh, it was actually to Homeland Security and he wrote it to the U.S. Senate. And he calls Bitcoin ingenious, legitimate way to pay for goods and services around the world without the dead hand of the bank. He holds, he says it holds long-term promises. He says it, it liberates world trade. This is Ben Bernanke talking about Bitcoin. He says, Bernanke also says, um, Bernanke um, served notice on the powerful state-run currencies, the dollar, the euro, the pound sterling, that their day of monopoly are over with. That's what Ben Bernanke said in 2013 about Bitcoin. So it doesn't sound like he's that much opposed to Bitcoin. And of course, he would have had the power and the idea and the design and the knowledge and the, uh, the far-sightedness to see the future of the quantitative easings and the stimulus and the driving the interest rates to zero, which is where they're at right now, the treasuries to negative yields, and how you have to have some way of being able to counteract that because you know after you go to zero nobody i mean the idea of having 30 year treasuries or you know and have zero interest on them is absurdity nobody would do that nobody's going to lend money at zero which is basically where we're at right now and the reason we're doing that is because of this so much money is being created that nobody wants to pay i mean there's nobody it's it's it's, it's quantitative easing it's the money creation that's driving these interest rates down so once you get to zero, you've run out of you've run out of any maneuverability. You can't. It's like um, you know you're playing football and you're cornered by the other team. You're completely encircled and you, there's no place to go. You're just going to have to, you know, you're going to have to go down. There's no nothing you can do, and that's kind of where they're at right now with the Federal Reserve System. They're kind of down. They have no more ammunition left. They have no more uh, uh, no more bullets in, in the chamber. So that's why I believe that Ben Bernanke created Bitcoin in 2009 for a time when he realized that this that there would be no other way for the Federal Reserve to create currencies or, or to create more money without an alternative that people could use being a cryptocurrency. And also, he, I think he believed at that time that we were going to have to have an alternative to the banks because people would start to understand what was going on, which everybody does now, which is the banks print the money out of nothing. And I think he would he was thinking ahead knew enough I had to come up with this idea and 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 in in and actually created the idea with the help of some other people obviously he had resources and people at the Federal Reserve that could do this that weren't interested in exposing the idea because I think they really want the idea to be something that nobody ever um you know ever they can never say anybody had any kind of agenda with it that this just is an anonymous person or, or an anonymous something that just created this this idea that now is worth 135 billion dollars uh the idea that of that happening is i think the odds of that happening are almost zero especially when people would be talking to other people obviously talking to other people about this kind of stuff so helicopter bed Bernanke, and, and if you go back and you read a lot of his works a lot of what he does uh he is always talks very favorably about bitcoin the only negative thing he does say about bitcoin is he thought it was going to be used for a lot of illegal activity but creating it right after the banking crisis, and that's another thing. Ben Bernanke said we were in the banking crisis. We were hours from co complete collapse. Uh, the banking system was hours from complete collapse. When does Bitcoin uh, become, um, um, when was Bitcoin developed? Right after the, the, the banking crisis, literally right after. Right after Bernanke says we're hours from collapse and something has to be created. Or we have to add stimulus to the to the to the to the uh, system and bail out these billion-dollar banks. Uh, he realized at that point something else had to be done, and he was he was quantitative easing for the next 10, 12 years, and testing, watching Bitcoin, watching how it works, seeing how it was uh, uh, functioning in the in the system, knowing that we would come to a time where we'd have to turn to a digital currency. Not that the U.S. dollar will ever go away, and not that the U.S. dollar won't still be world reserve currency, but it's going to be 
instead of generic money, I believe we're going to go more to money that has a purpose or money has, that has a digital, um, a, a digital reason for being used. Uh, and like I said the other night, I think Bitcoin will be a store of value. I think Ethereum will be a smart contract platform. Uh, we created a cryptocurrency that will be a geolocation program uh, of money. I mean, there's going to be money that's going to be very specifically, very specific to what it is that you, you're using it for. And it's not just going to be this idea of world reserve currency, U.S. dollar. There'll be other things involved. And also, if the, uh, if the U.S. government, I mean, I, I, and think about this for a second, too. Bitcoin's been around for 11 years, and it's maintained um, itself. I mean, um, if, if the government ever wanted to um, stop Bitcoin, they had the power to do so. And they had the power to do so a lot of times very early. I mean, look what happened with the Silk Road. Uh, the creators of the Silk Road, I think, are in jail right now. So if the person, or if any time in the last 11 years, countries could have shut down Bitcoin, they would have. The, reason, the only reason Bitcoin exists today is because governments, and especially the U.S. government, has allowed it to exist. Uh, believe me, uh, they have the power and the technology and the money and the wealth to shut down anything they want to shut down. If they thought of Bitcoin as a threat to the system, they would have shut it down. It wouldn't be trading today. You wouldn't be able to use your fiat currency to buy it. You wouldn't be able to buy it online. You wouldn't be able to buy it through Coinbase or anything like that. You wouldn't be able to exchange and use it as you can do with many companies online right now with Bitcoin. You can trade them back and forth. So this is something the U.S. government has allowed and not only allowed and in certain places embraced. Uh, so even though you have Donald Trump, who I believe is just a play actor, um, although he goes off script quite a bit, but even though he says, I'm not a fan, he doesn't really understand it. Most people don't understand Bitcoin. Most people don't understand cryptocurrencies, but they've been allowed to exist. The other thing that comes to mind as I speak is also the fact that EOS, EOS, which is the one uh, uh, that we support, and of course we build on, was able to get a waiver from the Security Exchange Commission. What does that tell you? That tells you that there's a there's there's a, there's there's, a, there's leniency towards cryptocurrencies. We're giving them a waiver. Uh, we're we're not going to yeah sure they got a, a fine, but the fine was very very insignificant for what the value of a platform like EOS is. Um, the other thing I think Ethereum was able to not be. Uh, and I don't know if Ethereum had to pay a uh, fine or not, but basically Ethereum was given a pass by the Security Exchange Commission. So the Security Exchange Commission ha have embraced these ideas and are embracing these ideas. So um, believe me, they could have stamped it out any time they wanted, just like the Silk Road and put those people in prison. But they haven't. So they've allowed this to go on for quite some time. And so that's my, that's my, that's my feeling. I feel like helicopter Ben Bernanke was the actual inventor of Bitcoin, along with the other group of people. I don't think he did it all by himself. He was a cryptographer, the video's below. I'm going to uh, put that below so you can take a look at that. And I think that he was the actual Satoshi Nakamoto that created Bitcoin and that did that for a purpose because he knew of the problems and who else could envision the future better than Ben Bernanke. He knows the system inside and out. And if there are two people that I listen to, and every time they're right, almost too right. One is Bill Gates, and the other is Ben Bernanke. These two individuals seem to get be, get, get it right all the time. So if they are Nostradamus or pronosticators or people that, that can see the future, those would be, be my two picks of people to listen to. Uh, ben Bernanke and Bill Gates, they seem to always get it right, which tells you one thing, that either they're very, very, very smart or they know stuff ahead of time we don't know. And so that's kind of what I think. I think that uh, um, these people knew ahead of time what was happening, what was gonna happen. They had to, they had to come up with an idea and I think they did. I think they realized that the, the worldwide trading uh, problem had to be solved, the double spending problem had to be solved and people had to have, uh, people were gonna lose faith in the banks. And they had to create a system that was digital, that, that fit the current economy the current way things were going. And they also had to have a way for that all to be tracked and traced. And I think that's another thing behind this too, is the ability to track and trace almost every transaction via the blockchain, regardless of what people say. It's just that way. I mean, if you, if you, uh, 
am, am I taking on this? Is this is bad news or if this is good news? If you like the government or dislike the government, I don't know. But the but the but my take on this is it's it, it's the way it's going to be, regardless of how you'd like it to be. It's the way it's going to be, and you're not going to develop anything without some sort of government oversight. Uh, you're never going to put a financial system together that doesn't have some government um, oversight. It just isn't going to happen. The government's way too strong, way too powerful. Uh, too many people involved, too many people that work for the government, too, many, too much is happening, too many ways for the government to figure out how to get you know, your tax dollars to service this debt. And there's no way you're going to come up with any kind of an exchange system that doesn't involve the U.S. government. So either you, you, you go along with this, with this, if you think that I'm correct and Ben Bernanke was actually the developer of Bitcoin and this is all government idea and planned, either you go along with it or you try to stay outside the system and you know you 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 walk around with a bag of gold or a bag of silver and you uh you know you uh you you hope nobody figures out you got it or not or tries to steal it from you or whatever else is going on i mean if you want to be in the system or you don't want to be in the system that's entirely up to you but i i, I prefer to at least know what's going to happen ahead of time and then plan for that and that's why i say i think bitcoin is a perfect opportunity uh for people to invest not that I'm saying that you should do it, because obviously that's not the thing to do. Everybody has different sets of circumstances and everybody has different ideas. But if that's something that you're thinking is a good idea, I would don't join you in that thought. I think it's a great idea too. And as I look at this overall, I would say yes, yes. There's a lot of good reasons to be involved with cryptocurrencies at this time, especially with all the stimulus coming out and the fact that the, uh, the banks are once again going to uh it's going to be printing a lot a lot of money and uh, there's gonna be a lot of, e of quantitative easing and uh, we are in you know definitely times of uh, trouble so we'll see what happens but anyway that's my take i think ben bernanke is actually the satoshi nakamoto thank you very much for listening appreciate it